Okay. Let me hit record. All right. So we'll start recording. And uh, if everybody's ready, we'll start yep. in three, two, one. Welcome to the Mystical Underground. Thank you for joining us. This is Rob McGregor and, and Trish McGregor and our tech magician producer john posey you can go to the mysticalunderground.com where we make regular blog posts and where you can find out about our books among our books are the shift reports from the mystical underground phenomena harnessing your psychic abilities aliens in the backyard and the seven secrets of synchronicity trisha's latest novel is skin shifters and rob's latest novel is tulpas our guest today is psychic healer Ken Lloyd. We came to know him because of our friend Susan Antorno, who mentioned that he spoke at her spiritual center that she attends, and she suggested him as a guest for our podcast. So he poked around on his website, asked him to come on. Trisha asked if he worked on ankles. He said he did, and virtual sessions followed. It's really difficult to describe how Ken does what he does, but here's Ken's description of his work from his own website. Ken has the spiritual technology to instantly break past life contracts, promote energetic physical healing, release self-limiting traumas, remove negative dense energy, and even rewrite your soul agreements to align with your current mission. As a master activator, one of Ken's missions is to activate the spiritual technologies embedded in every soul on the planet. He's able to remove energetic blockages and then apply activating and coded energies from the higher realms that unlock and accelerate your spirit. As a result, you'll be able to access more of your blueprint. Spirit will provide you clarity around your galactic gifts and your spiritual purpose, and you may even get the chance to interact with higher realm ETs. Today, Ken plays a frontline role in helping people access their hidden talents and expand their human experience. He has healed, cleansed, and activated countless individuals across the nation. Ken is the bridge that will fast track you to the galactic power hidden within your DNA. So welcome, Ken. Welcome, We've really Ken. been eager for this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me on. Yeah. So how did okay, uh, Rob? <laughs> yeah. So how did this uh, healing journey <clears throat> begin for you, Ken? Uh, quite subtly, or, or, or subtly, I guess is the word. Uh, so I'm what they call a walk-in. So mm -hmm. a walk-in is somebody who had an experience where another soul has stepped into the body. In, in my particular case, five years ago, um, I was going through my latest acquisition. So previously, I'm a cybersecurity engineer or entrepreneur. I've created three cybersecurity companies, and I've sold all of them. And the third acquisition was very stressful. Um, and through that process, I ended up having a near-death experience. The mm -hmm. near-death experience itself wasn't all of that eventful. Right. So for about three weeks, I had deceased loved ones talking to me, which was the first time anything has ever happened to me. And it was exciting. Right. Being able to talk to somebody who had passed over. And, and I still remember this, never asking any really important questions, just having these conversations. <laughs> so, right. Right. So so three weeks into it, you know, I'm laying in my bed and I, I, I'm really upset. I'm angry. The the acquisition wasn't going as planned. And and I'm screaming. My fists are, are clenched. And I'm like, just make it stop. Make it stop. And I remember those words clearly because what I had actually meant was make the acquisition stop, you know, make all of that trauma. <laughs> you know, and at that time I was sick. I had I had a pituitary tumor. You know, I had other things going on in my body. It was it was pretty, pretty, you know, um, intense. But for a minute and a half there, I'm in my bed and my back arches up and you know, this crazy pose. I say that yoga instructors would be very proud of this pose that I created. <laughs> but I was locked in that position and I felt something come out of my body. And that was it. There was no, you know, I went to the other side and I had this experience and I met this and said that none of that. I literally went to sleep. But the next morning, there was no one there talking to me anymore. So previous to this, I've never had a spiritual experience in my life. I'm not religious. I don't study anything. You know, left brain, entrepreneur, create technology. But that very moment, something triggered inside of me that says, find out what happened and you can do this now. I'm like, oh, that's super cool. Let me <laughs> let me figure this out. So through a process, I ended up um, learning how to detox my body and then finding people who can teach me how to meditate and teach me how to connect. And so that's how the whole journey started. And, and that process was almost a two-year process before things actually started happening. 
So I'll kind of stop there, <laughs> pause, and see if there's some questions or if you guys want me to elaborate. Yeah, yeah. Can you uh, tell us a little more about what a walk-in is? Yeah. So there are several types of walk-ins. All right. But ultimately, what this means is that you know when we're here, we have our soul, our consciousness, us, and a walk-in simply means another soul came into the body. Now, typically, it's a replacement. All right. Somebody has an actual car accident or near-death experience. You know, maybe it's suicide. Maybe it's something else, right? Illness. And another soul will step in as a soul leaves. My understanding is there's a two-minute window for that to happen. That kind of walk-in experience, when that soul comes in, it has no idea who anyone is. The job, the, the spouse, the kids, none of this. It's a brand new soul. It still has the memories that are residing in the body or in the cellular structure of the host, but it doesn't want anything to do with any of it. And what happens is that new soul will usually shift the life completely within three or four months, meaning, you know, divorce, moving, new job, whatever it is. So it's very, very uh, impactful, transformational and, and rough. It's very, very hard. So that's one type of walk-in. It, it wasn't for me. I, I never left my body. That whole arching thing that took place, my trauma left me, which made room for another version of me to come in. So another Ken, if you will, from a, another place. So a walk-in is simply another consciousness occupying the body. And my okay. Now, did you have to agree to this? You know, yes, you do. But it's not something uh -huh. you would agree to on a conscious level. All right. It's not that I'm lying there. I'm like, go ahead and come on in. It wasn't like Take that. Me. <laughs> so, so the walk, so the walk-in experience is like a temporary experience when you're doing the healings. Is that that it? And then it goes away, or is it there not all the for time? Me. Yeah, not for me. Now there are other types of walk-ins. I believe there's five types. There's a, a book by Sheila Seppi called, you know, uh, the consciousness or, or awaken of the consciousness. She talks about the five different versions, and there is a version where they'll pop in and pop out every couple of days or whatever. That is not my case. In okay. my particular case, it's me. I'm here. We're both here. And I, I say we're both here because the story gets even thicker. And I'll fast forward for that for <laughs> just a moment. But on April 1st of this year, so my original experience happened early 2018. All right. And my whole body had been upgrading since. But in April 1st this year, another 11 versions of me came in. Plus oh, God, my higher selves. So if you were doing the math here, there's there's <laughs> literally 13 versions of me hanging around, plus the original me. So there's 14. They're here permanently. My God, well, that can get confusing. <laughs> all all types of walk 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 ins then. Well, it's all me, but okay. it's different realities. Right. Okay. And I have to. Yeah. Yeah, I have to tell you a synchronicity. So today we uh, since we're doing this right at 5 p.m. around our time we're making dinner, we decided to do. Uh, take out uh, Chinese. So right. we got it about uh, some a little bit after four and Trish ordered it on the phone, but I got in there and they didn't have the order. So I had to wait 10 minutes for it. And then they packaged it up, give it to me. And I look at it and it says on the outside, walk in. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a great day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Trish, you got a question? Yeah, I do. Ken, when you work on someone, you speak um, what our friend Susan Antorno calls a light language. How did that evolve? That's interesting. So each version of, of me that, that's in me, again, brings a talent, a gift, a, a modality, right? And I'm just learning, believe it or not, about four or five weeks ago to communicate with each one of these versions. They're beginning to tell me these short stories, all right? <laughs> but in there, they one of the gifts they have is the ability to speak light language. All right. In light language, you, you can think of it like this. There, there are words that come out, but there's no words. There's sounds. There's noises, if you will. All right. And it's designed so that the universe or the other consciousnesses can come through me and speak directly to your soul or consciousness without your ears interrupting, your brain mm -hmm. manipulating it and, and confusing it. Now, light language is great. But the gift I bring is over 500 different light languages. So mm -hmm. depending on wow. what I'm talking to, if I'm talking to an ET, right, there'll be a certain tone that comes out. And, and by the way, we just for clarity, and I'm talking about in meditation or in a session, you know, they're not in my room. They're not physical. All right. No. But uh, in my sessions, I'm using light language the whole time to talk to whatever I'm dealing with. There are times where the light language would come through as a grunt and I can feel it in my, my lower lungs. It's, and those are 
you know, entities that I deal with that are very, very ancient and, and rough, and it's just the way they speak. So light language, you can think of it as a universal translator from soul to soul without, without in interpretation. It sounds so, a lot like tongues, you know, is. when you hear people speaking. Yeah, it and, seems and similar, folks, and yet it's yeah. different. Yeah, for those folks that have a, a religious foundation, that's how we explain it to them, right? Because when you hear somebody speaking in tongues, you, you don't know what they're they're saying. And the reality is, is right. they don't know either. They're just allowing that, that energy to flow through and come uh, out. And again, everyone in the audience is receiving not only the words, but they're receiving codes, energy, information, if you will. So you do both group and individuals, uh, Ken. How did this start, though? What was your first uh, healing experience, and how did uh, that come about? So as I went through my discovery of, yeah. of who I am, you know, mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, I could speak to somebody on the other side. I want to learn how to do it again. So I found people to teach me, all right? And it didn't quite happen the way I thought it was going to happen. You know, I found a website. Uh, and this person, and I found, hey, this, learn this, learn this, learn this. I'm like, I'm going to check all the boxes and sign up and pay a bunch of money, right? And, and that's exactly what I did. But for the first eight months, it was cleaning my body, all right? So I was, you know, heavy into ADHD medicine. I was heavy into energy drinks, right? And I had a horrible diet. So I had to heal my body. And for clarity, I actually can't heal myself. I can heal anybody <laughs> but me. So I had to do do the normal healing process through herbs and detox and finding people. So through this, this program I, I signed up for, I started having experiences. I would drop into meditation. I would go out into space or I'd go out into a planet, you know, wherever this person took me for a journey. And I got to mm -hmm. tell you, I had no belief at that time. I'm like, really? I've got a great imagination. I'm making this up. And this <laughs> other person is, is validating. No, no, I'm sitting right next to you. I'm there with you. I'm like, I don't see you. So, it took me a long time to have any type of confidence, right? But then this particular person says, hey, I want you to connect to my mother, all right, and heal her. I'm like, okay. So again, in meditation with this other person on the line, her mother wasn't online, and I connected to her mother. And immediately I, I said to the, the lady, I'm like, your mother's a witch. But from the 1600s. Wow. She, yes, she's a powerful witch. And all of a sudden, you know, the red flag should have went up a little bit at that point. Right. But I'm like, wow, I just got something right. Something totally right. And, and then I, I did, I was able to identify the, the parts of the, the mother that needed healing. Right. So that was my first, wow, something really just happened here. From there, huh. you know, I did start reading some books. You know, I read some books on energy healing and such. And, and I actually took a class to, to do some energy healing. And I'm sitting in that class. Oh, I must have been 30 or 40 people in there. It was a, five day zoom class and uh i'm doing everything every exercise i i'm i'm hitting i'm doing it like it wasn't even an effort and i'm like this is really really interesting i still had no confidence right but through that class you had to sign up 25 people to do free sessions on to to do your testing and all of them were able to validate so you know at the end of the day these gifts were put into me but i had to discover how to get to them and mm -hmm. I hired people to teach me. So yes, huh. that's how that's how that happened. And from there, it was just trusting in people to trust in me. So this is fairly well, recent, though, isn't it? Uh, when, when did this begin for you? Uh, you said the 2018. Event, yeah, the 2018. Spring, okay. spring 2018. Okay, yeah. The last so two years have really been the the turning point where things really started happening. Yeah. When you started every working day with groups? You, I'm sorry, two questions. Yeah. Yeah, you started working with groups uh, then? Yes. I did. So, you know, if you're into the spirit stuff, we all talk about downloads and information. And it was about well, two years ago this December, I kind of received my, my first download. All right. Mm -hmm. And I don't get many downloads. At least I didn't. But then I'm like, I'm laying in bed and I just, I get this message now to go into my DNA number three. And I'm like, okay, so at this point, I can see inside the body, right? Still not a lot of confidence, but I can see in the body. So I went into my DNA number three. And you can imagine a long tube. So if you put the ladder of DNA, one, two, and three, I went in there. And there's this long tube. And in there are drum symbols. So the symbols that are flat, but they were vertical, the medical, uh, metal ones. 
there were four on the left and four sets on the right. And I got that message, take one of them on the left and move it to a different position, all right? So I did that. I'm like, they all started vibrating. Now, again, this is in my, my mind's eye or in my meditation. They all started right. vibrating. The bottom of that tube dropped out to what appeared to be infinity. I saw lights everywhere in the bottom. And then I raised my focus up and there was a portal in front of me about 30 feet long. And there were four incredibly large ETs at the end of the portal. I wow. later found out I was the fifth one. So these are called the Craigs, and that's K-R-E-G-S. So I'm a Craigian. I, I call my buddy up. I'm like, hey, this just happened. He says, oh, 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 do it to me. So the next <laughs> day, yeah, the next day I, I, I get on the line and I do his number three all the way up through his DNA 12 strands. And every one of them told a story. They activated something. It was it was pretty incredible. Now, this um, this this download also came with this instruction to bring in this golden plasma from the Pegasus star system and then to bring it in the body and to do this meditation process. So this is what I do. I do groups, right? But it's usually the same type of meditation, right? But we bring in a lot of different energies. And in the group session, whereas you, you may take a, a meditation that works on one or two things, you know, maybe it's the ascension energies or, or maybe uh -huh. it's just dealing with heartbreak well in this particular case it deals with the heart trauma it deals with the root chakra trauma it handles all of the energetic cords around you that don't serve you so it starts breaking those apart it handles the physical body healing which is incredible right for those that are ready it'll tap the third eye opened a little all right people will see and see the energy see the lights you know in the sessions um it also brings in divinity energy so the angels show up and they work on folks as well um, there's like nine things it does, and I'm probably missing a few, right? But it's incredible. It's it's about a 35 to 45 minute guided visualization. It's, it's not even meditation, right? Just sitting in the room, listening, you're getting what's being delivered. You don't have to go through the visual process for this to happen. But mm -hmm. we take them through these 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 eight or nine different energies, and then you'll see the basically the two hearts connect, my heart and their heart connect. And you'll see these little pink hearts coming out and I have them focus on the visualization and then the light language comes through and it's hard. It's loud. It's fast for three or four minutes, sometimes five. And then a very soft energy comes in a light language. So there's two or three different energies come in. It changes each time. But while I'm doing this guys, my eyes are closed. Right. And I can see in the crowd, the energy is going in and out of the bodies. Just, just, oh. and then I know, and I'm like, everyone to stay quiet, focus on those hearts. And I'm watching all the energy and I'll see them all leave at once. And I'm like, we're done. And people come out of it and they're either uh. shaking or their heartbeats really fast or, or they, they're having a hard time coming out of it because they're so, so deep into it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, I, that was downloaded information um, that came through on how to do that as well. So well, the Ken, idea, go the ahead. I'm sorry. I, when you heal a particular area of the body, like you did for me with the with the ankle mm -hmm. joint, do you do you see what do you see? What do you hear? Well, it, it changes for everybody, right? And uh -huh. you know, we talk about or I talk about me going through these upgrades. So April first, more upgrades happen. More of me came in. These upgrades will probably happen the rest of my life. So things keep shifting. In fact, when I did your healing, you were kind of in the middle of this shift and you got to experience kind of the before and the after of the latest and greatest. Uh -huh. All right. So yeah, tr go ahead. Uh, yeah. I, I was just thinking that maybe Trish could explain what, from her point of view, what happened to her. So for people can understand what her experience was. Like I don't know what happened. That's, that's the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, well, I just, what's I the reason, what's the results though? Well, the results have been great. I mean, I I walk without pain most of the time, not always. <clears throat> you know, sometimes if I've been moving around a lot during the day, there's still some residual pain. But for the most part, my pain's gone. Yeah, I, I have to say that uh, Trish was barely able to walk uh, she uh, it, before she met Ken. And there's been a, a dramatic change from from my point mm -hmm. of view. So, so in the session, right? So there's there's two types. We talk about the group session, right? When I do the group healing, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with the group. Like I don't know what's being healed. Everyone gets exactly what they need. 
you know, my team inside of me, if you will, are, are doing the work and they'll give you what exactly you needed. When I do the one-on-one -on -one session, it's different though. So there's really two phases on the one-on-one -on -one session. The first phase is I need to remove the energies that are impacting you. Now, the energies impacting you aren't just physical, all right? But it's mm -hmm. also the blockages in life, right? The, the other things that have happened in past lives, right? Or ancestral or, or contracts or your, uh, again, your soul contract. So I'm able to see all these. I'm able to identify, hey, what is really the cause of the ankle? And I will tell you now, I don't remember our sessions. I don't remember right. what happens in each I session. do. <laughs> you do. So, so, but I have to find out, hey, what is causing this? And the cause, you know, isn't, listen, people are like, well, I'm old, it hurts, or why well, I twisted my leg, it hurts, or I was in a car accident. I'm like, I don't need the story. And I do it very gracefully, of course. I'm like, I don't need to know the cause because there's always an energy behind it. That's, that's uh -huh. it. our bodies want to heal, period. Our bodies will heal themselves once you remove that energy that's holding it back. So my job is to remove those energies. So in a session, I'll simply ask spirit when I, when I bring you in, show me what I need to know for Trish. And they'll start uh -huh. with the most important pieces first. And they always show up as characters or entities or, or ETs or animals or whatever they uh -huh. are. And it's not so much important what they show up, as, show up as because spirit will show me an image that I can relate to. All right. And then I'll explain it. And in those images, it's all consciousness. So I'm able to connect to the consciousness of that image and communicate with uh -huh. it through telepathy. And find out, hey, what are you, what are you doing? Why are you here? You know, are you a, a good thing or not a good thing, right? And as I do this, I'm able to bundle this up into a bubble, if you will. Um, and I'm going to pause there for a second and just to state that I'm also what they call a quantum blueprint technician. So really what I'm doing is I am running quantum programs to contain and remove that energy from you. All right. So I do that. And I remove it off the scene. And it becomes a very permanent removal the way I do this. So those blockages of the mm. life don't show up again. Those energies that are attached to the ankle, they don't show up again. But I'm able to see all of these, communicate with all of them. And it's like a, a tangible thing. I can pull them off you. I can talk to them. I can remove them. I, uh. it's, it's as if I'm working with somebody right in front of me, but with more authority. And, there, and yeah, I mean, there was one thing that you said to me about a past life where you saw me uh, lifting a woman out of a coffin. Hmm. And you said this was, I, I was going to apparently raise her from the dead. And it was because of a contract I had made with somebody else, but there was dark magic involved. And hmm. so you removed that. Yeah. Which I yeah. found yeah. fascinating. Right, right. So I believe in that particular case, typically when there's a past life or ancestral or an attachment, let's just say an attachment, uh -huh. it goes to usually to a one on one relationship from the client to the attachment to the past life mm -hmm. or the ancestor, right? And, and the reason those connections are there is because those folks usually don't want to pass over. They're afraid of something they did or they're afraid mm -hmm. of, or, or they're, they're holding so much trauma that they don't know what to do. So in that particular case, it was interesting because. <clears throat> there was black magic around that ancestor all right uh -huh. and i could see the thing that was casting that black magic so i had to break the magic heal the person remove that in order for your energy to be cleared so it was kind of a two-step uh -huh. process but well, again it was a little unique and i you know they, they always put people in front of me unique so <laughs> every every session i do is a learning session now i know that sounds a little crazy to say well every session is a learning or training session but what i did for you now becomes a quantum program right the next person it's instant or in the group settings it's instant so it's a hmm. learning thing I so, hope okay, right. so yeah so ken we have we have past life uh, contracts that uh, are affecting our lives currently is that yeah, yeah what we you're do saying? yeah we absolutely do we all have contracts and past life stuff right and, and not all of it's going to impact us in this life, but sometimes they do. And they'll show up in the form of heal or, you know, a pain and discomfort or, you know, another th you think of like, um, you know, everybody in the family is always broke. We don't know how we can get ahead or everyone else. Everyone in the family has got a hip issue, so on and so forth. There's kind of ancestral stuff. But for the past life contract stuff, 
I'm able to, to go in there and I used to tell the story, right? I used to go in there and tell the client, hey, I see this little girl and she's on a stagecoach. This is one example I do remember. She's on a stagecoach all by herself and she must've been eight or nine years old, right? And she's, and stagecoach is empty and the horses are just doing their thing, right? Well, what had happened is everyone in the coach was murdered further up the road. Mm -hmm. And these, this, this guy, or these guys come by in these black horses, the black outfits. And they're like, hey, you have a choice. You can ride with us, allow us to take over, or you're going to be gone as well. So in this particular case, she created the contract that says, I will serve you in whatever shape or form that is. But that contract carried through life, carried through life, and so on. Uh -huh. So most past life contracts I see are ones that are created out of necessity of survival. Not always, mm -hmm. but at least the ones that show up. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Has any has anyone come to you who is blind or deaf and uh, want ask for help That's from you? A great question, and the answer is no. <laughs> okay. I've not had somebody who's <laughs> well, blind or or completely deaf show up. And okay. I will tell you that the healing of the eyes is one of the hardest things to do. All right, because our eyes, in my opinion, the eyes are where the trauma actually comes in. We see the trauma before it gets angry. Right. So they have told me I can heal eyes. That they told me that about eight weeks ago. I have not done it yet, and I haven't had that many people <laughs> show up for it. And I will tell you, if you're listening to this, don't book a session with me and ask me to heal your eyes. <laughs> All right, because until that happens, I'm not promoting it. But they tell me it's available, and it will be a slow process for me to bring that online. As for the ears, I can heal hearing, I can heal stuff, but no one completely deaf has shown up and asked for that session. And That's, maybe there's uh, a reason for that. Yeah. Uh, so the two parts of the body that you really can't heal yet are eyes and ears, hearing uh, and sight. Well, I, I, I can't heal deafness. Uh huh. But somebody who's hard of hearing or have hearing problems, I have those show up often. And they are oh, okay. the noises in the ear and those things like that, right? Uh, and again, for the eyes, at any at any level of the eyes, whether it be blindness or glaucoma or whatever, uh, I, just haven't, I haven't had them in front of me yet, even though, again, I'm supposed to be able to do it. I just haven't mm -hmm. had experience. Have you had mm -hmm. any experiences where you see something in a person that you can't deal with that they need to go to a hospital right away? or get, I, I will, yeah, so... There, there are times, right? There are times where I will see situations where I will tell the client, you need to follow up with your physician sooner than later, right? Yeah. No. I won't tell them what it is, mm -hmm. all right? Because I'm not yeah. a doctor. I, I, what I see inside the body has no correlation to what uh, a physician would see, right? It's it's more of an under, it's, it's what I see and what I understand and the message I'm getting. I'm like, listen, you have a condition. You need to go see a physician sooner than later. And that has happened. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Has that happened in a group setting or just individual to individual? Yeah. In the group settings, I don't know what's happening. I'm, I'm completely, uh -huh. they, they will not allow me to know what each person's getting. And they're not allowing me, they don't allow me to set any expectations for anyone. They just show up and they get whatever spirit needs to deliver to them. Right. But yeah. I, yeah, it, there was a guy in that, in, in the group healing in uh, Sarasota who said, my fingers, they don't hurt. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So Which I thought was pretty cool. Let, let me talk about that one real quick. So when I do my event in Sarasota or I do lectures, right, I, I will simply go up there and I'll have somebody there pick someone out of the audience, right? I don't pick uh -huh. them, I allow somebody else to do that. And in that particular day, we ended up picking a, a wonderful lady out of the crowd. I, I came, she's probably 80 or so, right? And she had lower back pains. And that's what I tell folks. Raise your hand if you have pain and discomfort in the neck, the shoulders, or the back. When I do these random ones, because those are actually relatively easy to heal for me. And the person has a, a, a measurable level of discomfort that they can then mm -hmm. inform the audience has it been reduced to relief. So again, that particular case, I had someone call her, she comes up. And I actually watched that a few weeks ago. It was about four and a half minutes for me to work on her back. And in her particular case, she had an ancestral connection as well. Cause I'm working on her back and I remember getting nervous. I'm like, oh my gosh. Cause she was the first time I'd ever randomly grabbed someone from the audience. I'm like, oh, we've got one somebody here. And it's gonna be really tough. And, but they're like, nope, ancestor went in there, healed the ancestor and she's, she's done. I later found out 
about 10 minutes later, she's in the back of the room bending over, touching her toes. And she was scheduled for a coder <laughs> when she came back a few days later. She didn't go. Uh, but didn't go, yeah, that's good. Point, I'm working on the lady in the front. And then a few minutes after she walked away, the guy raises his hand. He says, I don't have arthritis in my left hand anymore. Now, no. uh -huh. this exact thing happened to me two weeks ago here in Naples. I did another event, right? Smaller crowd. And I had somebody grab someone out of the crowd and I worked on her. Yeah, it was her neck, I believe. And the next day was the healing event. And the lady comes up to me the next day. She says, I was in your lecture yesterday. I said, yeah. She says, for a year and a half, I've had a problem with my tailbone. It hurts. And the doctors can't tell me what's going on. They can't fix it. They can't do anything. It's just something I'm, I'm going to have to live with. She says, I don't have anything going on today. I have no more pain. It's gone. So, so huh. here, again, someone in the audience has been healed because I'm working on somebody else. And this is happening more and more. They, they tell me when I get a little better, a little stronger, <laughs> that I, I just need to literally show up. And those around me will get whatever they need to be healed. So this is where it's escalating to. And those are just two examples of people actually getting to my attention to let me know. Hmm. Okay, so can, Ken, is this some sort of evolution of humankind? That um, you're experiencing do you think i mean what what is this is how does this promote humanity or okay. how does it so, affect how we evolve as people there there are bigger things coming for me so i have two two different roads and right now we're talking about the road of healing right where they mm -hmm. have that stage in front of thousands and thousands of people when i say they you know my team my spirit whatever right and i've been able to validate this with countless other folks I don't tell them my story, but they tap in and they go, oh my God, you're on stage with thousands of people, right? Uh -huh. Do the thing I do. And that is to clear the trauma of humanity and allow them to, you know, heal. But the second phase, which is coming here really, really quick for me, is technology. And I'm a spiritual technologist. I don't have any other words to explain it. But when I say technology, they're about ready to begin the next phase, which is me channeling and bringing in new technology for humanity now i kind of know what that is about that much right <laughs> but, but but for the sake of the argument i don't want to necessarily talk about it on the podcast today because i'm a mm -hmm. firm believer in having something in actuality or reality happening before right. I discuss it. otherwise it's just hearsay and craziness right but the point uh -huh. is, is this technology i'll be bringing in over the next few years will actually and I've asked the question, why do I have healing going on, this, this dangle here, and why do I have technology? And they said, listen, when you get the healing done and then you get the technology piece, you'll be able to put them together at some point in the future and create the new technology for humanity. So, yes, uh -huh. this version of me will be somewhat similar or available to humanity going forward, but uh, I've been told I'm a prototype. They're trying to stuff as much technology and stuff in me without breaking me and i'm like don't break me please don't break me <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah well it's now amazing. are there other people are there other people like you uh yeah i'm sure there are right absolutely i think that would be you know I, i've asked myself the question one i don't know who they are but two i think it would be awful awful naive of, of any of us to believe that you know one person is is gonna do this right show, right if anything happens to me so on and so forth there are many, many others that are coming online. And as a master mm -hmm. activator, I'll be able to help them get to where they need to be so they can do their segment of, of, of growth for humanity. So but, Ken, uh, Ken, when you're uh, doing a healing, how do you distinguish between uh, ancestral issues and past life issues? How do you, can you tell the uh, difference or? How, I, I ask. That? Okay. Or I used to ask. So about <laughs> August 3rd, actually is when that happened. <laughs> so on August 3rd, before August 3rd, I would ask. I have a big list of stuff I would go through. So the way this works <laughs> is I ask a question, I get an answer, right? And some of the questions that I ask is, are there any demons involved? Okay, and they are a real mm -hmm. thing. And I'm able to, to remove them. Is there any magic involved? Is there any ancestral? Is there any past life? And, uh -huh. you know, this, this long list of stuff. So I would have to ask, right? And I would get mm -hmm. yeses and noes. And I would say, show me the ancestor or show me the past life. On August 3rd, everything shifted so i got the information to go into the syrian mystery school all right now oh cool I, i've never been to a mystery school 
right? I'm like, oh, come on, you guys are messing with me. So I, I do. I, I jump into my meditation. I'm like, take me there, right? And they did. And they said, you need to go into the healing arts room. All right. So I go into the healing arts room. And in that room, there is like a baking sheet, if you will. Right. All right. And if you guys are from Florida, which I think you are, we all know our public size. Right. But on that yep. baking sheet <laughs> is this gelatinous material about the size of a sub, submarine sandwich. Right. But in, and it's just a gelatinous material. They said, listen, we want you to run your hand over that. All right. So I did. And everything dropped down to black powder. And they said, run oh. your hand over it again. I ran my hand over it and it re everything reformed gelatinous material looking like it was brand new. And they say, huh. this is how you do your healing now. I'm like, come on. Jeez. See you later. It was, I was probably only in there for 15 minutes in my meditation. Like it wasn't crazy. I'm like, is that all it is? So that's what I did. Later that day I had a session. I'm like, okay, move my hand over it, move my hand over it. Sure enough, pain's gone. From the, from the person, huh. like all gone, like instantly gone, like done. I'm like, that was so much easier. So much easier. Wow. All right. And I've done it on every single session since then, including your ankle as well. All right. Uh -huh. Which I think was the second or third session, but they wanted me to right. show it to me. But now it gets better. So now I would see, before I'd have to ask for the energetic attachments, is there any ancestral trauma? Is there any right. trauma? Well, now I just see the body. And by the way, when I see the body, it's the light body or the energetic body of the person. And I will see all the cords coming into it that are affecting that person. And I just sit there and they all dissolve to that black powder huh. in the way. And those aspects are getting healed. So I'm not cutting them. I'm healing those connections, right? So I no longer have to ask. Is there an ancestral or past life? Now, there has been one exception. In one of the clients, two cords remained. I'm like, that's weird. So I had to follow those cords and talk to that past life or ancestor. I'm not sure which one it was. But that's because they had a message they wanted to give the client. And as soon oh. as the message was given, everything disappeared. Did you give the message? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I, I call uh, myself like a baseball announcer, a sports announcer. I give play-by-play <laughs> play on everything, right? I'm going to tell you everything that goes on, even if I don't understand it, because you'll rewatch your session. And you'll be like, oh, my God, you know, a week later, a month later, whatever. That makes sense now. And it'll click. So not everything has to uh, uh, make sense in that hour I'm with you. It's for later, potentially, right? Right. So, And that's why you record everything. That's why I record everything. Uh -huh. So they've upgraded it since. Now, often we will have other causes of disease. Excuse me. And these can be from other realities, parallel lives, other things that are happening right now. All right. So if you're familiar with the little glass microscopes, I'm sorry, the little glass slides for microscopes, you know, the ones we uh -huh. slide in there for a little drop, right. zoom in. Well, they show me the glass slide with an imprint of that light body. So the lame light body, I'm looking at it almost like a hologram, right, in the glass slides. And for the client, they showed me on this first, there were a thousand of these that popped up, all vertical, all in the room. All right. Now, in this particular lady, again, I told you in the, earlier in the podcast, spirit puts people in front of me so I can learn and I can write these codes. Uh -huh. This particular lady... For a year and a half, or I think it's about a year and a half, she had this pain underneath her rib cage. The doctors couldn't tell her what it was. She's like, it's a bubble that keeps growing and growing, and it hurts, and it hurts. I'm like, okay. She says, my acupuncture says it's energetic, and I keep getting the message to call Ken. So I had known this lady about a year ago. She says, call Ken. So I, I do my hand over the, the area, right? And she's like, oh, my God, it's 50% gone, but it still really hurts. So for the next 30 minutes, I'm using all my tools in my tool belt. That's what I tell people. I got a tool belt with a bunch of tools and nothing's really working. So I asked Spirit, I'm like, okay, is this a test? They're like, yes, it's a test. I'm like, well, help me out. So they show me the slides <laughs> and they show me a thousand of them. And then one of those slides, somewhere in the middle, they, they showed that body part in this really weird chrome color. And I get the message, go put your hand over that. And I did. And when I moved my hand over that body part, all the slides changed in that area and they were healed. And, and I, I swear, as soon as I did, wow. it, it's, like, it's almost gone. It's like, I can't barely feel it. So I had to heal another aspect of her, but I healed 
all aspects of her. And even that is now increasing. So I can now see energy impacting another mm -hmm. reality of you, right? I can heal that reality, which will then heal you. So this is continuing to evolve all the time, but it's getting okay. easier. How many, how many realities of each of us are there? This could get really confusing. It does. <laughs> it really does. And and I don't go in to identify how many realities. Because if you'd ask anybody uh -huh. in the quantum, everything's infinite, right? So let's just yeah. say, but they only show me the number of slides where that particular thing I'm working on is to be an impact, mm -hmm. right? They, I, I don't think I could do, I, I mean, how, how can you visualize infinite, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a lot but of- But this woman you saw- <laughs> Go ahead. But with this woman, you saw a thousand slides. Probably a thousand slides. So is that, yeah, was that like a thousand different versions of her? Yeah, that's correct. Wow. And I've seen other ones where there's only been 70 or 80, you know, whatever the number is. And and they will shift around, but they only show me the slides that are relevant to the thing I'm working on. Hmm. Huh. But Ken, you're you're not a hands-on healer, right? You don't you don't touch people? I don't touch people. No, wow. definitely don't touch people. I don't. I don't want to have that type of, of connection, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I want to stay at a distance. And and I got to tell you, even if you're doing a session with me in front of me, you know, I put three or four feet between us. All right, uh -huh. you mm -hmm. have your space and I have my space. But the healing that happens in front of me physically is identical to what happens over Zoom uh, it, or a text message. So I've got a couple people that I've helped throughout the years, and I keep them in my little special VIP. You got my phone number, right? <laughs> And I get, I get a text message from the one lady. She says, I'm in the hospital. I'm in the ER. I'm having a reaction, so on and so forth, right? And I'm on my way to my dinner with my wife. And I'm like, I'll do whatever I can, just whatever. So, you know, quickly as I'm driving, I do the thing I do. She texts me back. I'm, I'm better now. I'm, they're releasing me. So <laughs> oh, even that's Zoom. fast. Yeah, literally it, it happens. And I don't have to be in a Zoom. I just, I don't have to be talking to you even just have to have that energetic connection. Yeah. What you, was her problem? I'm um, curious. I don't remember, again, right now, I don't remember what what what, what happened. Right. Um, I don't know if it was gastritis. It was something she ate. I don't know exactly what it was, but it was, it was she was throwing up. She was puking. She was right in the doctor's office. Oh, wow. Car. So, I mean, it was pretty, pretty, you know, yeah. for her. But yeah, no, it went away shortly after she texted me. Yeah. Are you familiar with a uh, psychic healer from a few decades ago, a Brazilian named Arrigo, the right. sur surgeon of the rusty knife? He he would <laughs> work with a, basically with a rusty knife and with a rusty knife. <laughs> yeah, pop out people's eyes, scrape, put the eyes back in, and uh, he ended up in prison. <laughs> but, wait, 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 wait! Is is that the John of God guy? The what? John of God. I think they also called him John of God. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's Riga, a, wasn't it? Was it, was it Brazil? Uh, his name his name yeah, yeah in it Brazil. Brazilian. It was probably him because he was put in in my understanding according to the Netflix documentary, I yeah. think he was put in prison for 65 counts of sexual assault or something like that. No, I think this hmm. is a different I think this is a different person. Uh he would have long lines of people every morning starting at six o'clock outside of his uh, little house in uh uh, somewhere were in Brazil, and uh, he would heal all, all day until like four o'clock in the afternoon. And but finally, the authorities came after him and yeah. uh, you know, took him away. But uh, there's a there's there a book, was a about book him. written yeah. about him, yeah. and that, that's what it was called, uh, Arrigo, uh, psychic surgeon of the. Uh, something I, I like that. looking that one up. Yeah, the rusty <laughs> surgeon of the rusty knife. Yeah, surgeon <laughs> of the rusty knife. Yeah, yeah. I can't yeah, put can that you, in the business card. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about your dealings and uh, communications with ETs in your work? Yeah. So uh, ETs show up often for those that are ready for it. All mm -hmm. right. And what, what do I mean by that? So those that are ready for it usually have some type of spiritual growth already. All right. And, and to be clear, I'm not talking about ET contact in the physical. All right. I've never uh -huh. seen a ship. I've never seen a shooting star that looks like a UFO, right? Like my team doesn't want me to have that experience or that that foundation of what I do. But I, I'm what they call a back door for the ETs. Let me kind of explain. So we've got the Galactic Federation out there doing the thing that they do. If you're following it, that's wonderful. I'm not allowed to follow it. My team's like, no, you can't follow anything. No politics, no news, no local stuff, no Galactic. Uh. You need to be 100% 
non-polarized, non-story. So this has been the last five or six years, none of this. But there are ET species out there that have business here with their own people. Let's just say people, right? And and they don't want to get, or they can't get through the Galactic Federation and all that. So I'm I'm a tunnel with permission from the uh. Galactic Federation other. And so what will happen is someone will show up and I'll be like, you know, spirit, show me what we need to know next, and the ET will show up. Do you see them? I mean, what? I, uh, I can see them, but they're fuzzy usually, right? Like I sometimes I can make out great details and characteristics, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's kind of not relevant. Like they're okay. going to show up, and they're going to look the way that they think you need to see them. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Even even my the, the Craig's the one I'm from. They're seventeenth dimensional. They're just pure light. But when mm -hmm. I see them, they look thirty feet tall. They're always in robes. Right. So they, they present <laughs> in a way that we can kind of relay or I can relate. But yeah. what happens is when they show up, you know, a couple of things. One, if there's activation that need to happen, those ETs will activate the, the client. Other times uh -huh. I'll bring the client into a white room. I'll bring the ET into a white room and I'll get the two of them to start talking. All right. Mm. And, and the ET, I'm like, listen, you need to ask the ET for a name, you know, make it up. It doesn't matter. Right. And then you need to be able to ask some very simple yes, no questions to, to create that communication. And then they leave with that. And then they will do whatever they need to do with that ET species from there on out. So I make those introductions. I, I've told myself I'm like the match.com for ETs. So, <laughs> but oh. it looks like yeah. the Palladians don't show up, the Arcturians don't show up, the Andromedans, the Syrians, the Ryans uh. don't show up. They, they have their own thing already with the Galactic Federation. These things are out, out beyond that. So Ken, Ken, we talked about showing um, people on the podcast how you work, and I was wondering if you could work on Rob's uh, right shoulder, right the shoulder, rotary cuff, ro rotator cuff, yeah, <laughs> rotator Can cuff. I? I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, I that's Rob. Can I work on you? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All right. So typically, when I'm doing the first part of the session, which is energetic healing, there's a lot of details that come through, right? But what I'm right. doing the second half of it, which is the body healing, I'm just going to be mumbling here. All right. Okay. So give me a second here. I'm going to drop in and get us where we need to be. Now, you have discomfort right now. Uh, when I'm relaxed like this, I don't really feel anything. When it's I'm lifting any weights, I, I work in the gym, it's, it's painful. And uh, I can't use my right arm like uh, my left arm. So uh, I... Yeah, you move it around. You're not going to feel any discomfort right now. No, no, I don't feel any discomfort now. But when I'm in the gym uh, with weights, definitely. I also play disc golf, and I have to throw left-handed rather rather than right-handed because <laughs> I can't because it really hurts when I when I try to throw a frisbee. Okay, so I'm happy to do this for you, but for the audience, they're not going to be able to, to know if anything's happened for you until you announce it at a later time. Because right, yeah, uh -huh. I'm like, yeah. You should, you, you'll know it right away. So. Okay. All right, so give me just a second here. Okay. I'm sorry, 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 I'm He's gone. Okay, so we're gonna, just gonna run in and, and do the shoulder real quick. So I can actually see the shoulder right now. It's it's definitely red. And you, you know, I don't know the body parts very well. And I'm okay not knowing the body parts. Like I could never tell you that muscle or, or that bone name or whatever. But you know, underneath the shoulder, I'm actually seeing red, a red line going across. Um, so give me a second here. I'm gonna do the the new method first. Okay, again, please. Okay, so literally that's it. Literally, so when, wow. I, when I did that and, and I went over the shoulder, the whole shoulder disappeared it, 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 as if you cut it out and I totally see that it didn't exist. And then I run the hand over it again and it rebuilds and it rebuilds with this red and chrome energy, which is really the indicator to me that everything is refreshed. And, you know, again, depending on where you're at, you either felt the energy or you didn't listen. A lot of folks can't feel, but other folks are like, wow, I can feel the tingling. 
if their circulation is issue, they'll feel the warmness start coming back to the legs, depending on what's happening. But for you, you're going to have to go out and test it. Right, exactly. Because I I, I, did, I wasn't in pain at the time we started, and yep, I'm right. still not in pain. But yep. when I do something, that's when I will te- to be able to test tomorrow. It. Yeah. Tomorrow, you're <laughs> playing frisbee golf. You'll right. know. <laughs> yeah. So it's so when I'm in my my sessions, I will usually ask the client very very right off the bat, "What pain and discomfort are you in right now?" Now, while I can do healing and everything we talked about earlier, right? But again, except for the eyes, right? Right. You know, a lot of conditions that are brought to me don't have a pain or discomfort with them. They have a diagnosis, right? And you can mm-hmm. fill in the blank and all that stuff, whether it be high pressure or high blood pressure or whatever. Like those, those aren't things we would normally feel, right? So mm-hmm. I will always ask the client, what, where do you actually hurt right now? All right. And mm-hmm. a lot of them will be like, you know, arthritis if they're older folks. So I'll, I'll use arthritis and they'll have instant relief. And I do that for a reason because there are psychological blocks. That says, hey, I, I'm not supposed to be able to feel this good that fast. Mm-hmm. But as soon as they're like, I can move my hand, it doesn't hurt. Then there's just there's something inside of them that just releases and allows the healing to take place. So oh, this is how I normally approach it. Like, give me the pain. Let's start with the pain. And then we'll do all the big <laughs> stuff associated with it. Okay. All right. Let's... Now, Ken, you mentioned the other day um, that if somebody is ticked off at the world that it's tough for you to heal whatever the problem is yeah so so there are yeah there are there are times i can't heal i'm not allowed to heal all right there are times i'll see the grim reaper or i see four of them Mm -hmm. three small ones and a large one they're like no you 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 can't come here and they're very they're very gentle very polite by the way i don't know what the stories were told way back when but i don't (laughs) i don't talk with these guys at all but i'm like okay and i accept it so I, i have to walk away i can't do anything you know, other times I used to work on somebody's, well, use your shoulder as an example, simply because we're talking. I would work on it and I would see it healed. And then I, I look away. And then I look back at the shoulder and either the shoulder appears the healed version or it'll revert to the version before I healed it. Right. And when it reverts like that, that tells me there's an energetic connection that's not allowing the healing to happen. Now, this could have been a past life or ancestor, but. In the place I have you at, there's a balcony, like an opera house balcony. And all your guides or your team yeah. is sitting up there with one. There's always one guy who's doing the speaking or one lady's doing the speaking. And they hold this little chart next to them with little check boxes, like a shopping list. But it's a list of experiences. Check, you done. Check, you done. And the bottom <laughs> one is usually unchecked. Now, I will ask them, is this an experience you're going through that's part of your, you know, your, your list? And they'll say yes or no. And if it is, then I have to ask them, can we check the box and agree to have this experience be completed? I got to tell you, nine nine times out of 10, they say yes. And then we rewrite your soul contract simply to put a check box in that experience so I can do my healing. There's other times that Uh. they're not allowed. They're, they're, They're not allowed. They're like, no, that person has absolute things they have to learn. And, and I got to tell you, sometimes it's tragic. You know, sometimes I will have a client in front of me that is facing a very critical situation. And the experience I had to have, this was their last experience in life. Like this was the thing huh. that, that brings them to, you know, to death. And I'm not allowed to change that. And nothing I can do can change that. I, I'm not huh. allowed. But yeah, just I can't. And I can try, but they're like, no. So yeah, there are times I can't do it. Hmm. Is that when you see the Grim Reaper that you mentioned? Um, no, not necessarily, right? Everyone's a little different, right? Um, the, the Grim Reaper for that particular case, as soon as I went in there, they showed up. All right. And they're like, no, no you can't be here. You got to go, right? But in uh, the other case, I begin the healing. I remove the trauma, move all the stuff I need to remove, but it's still not healing. And that's when the guides show up and say, no, this experience, this thing, no, they have to go through it. They absolutely have to go through it. Huh. I had a case the other day where I, I was uh, working on the ladies. Um, geez, I forgot what body parts is because I don't remember what I'm working <laughs> on. She had three things, right? Uh, her Achilles heel, I think, and, and some other things. And I'm not making much progress. And it, as I'm going through this, the guide says she needs to learn to release that anger inside of her. So it's interesting. I tell her this because that was a message I was supposed to tell her. That begins her on her healing page. She says, oh, I can't heal because I'm holding all this anger inside. And in hindsight, as I told her that, I 
I'm like, you know, the last 30 minutes, you're talking about how everyone else has a better business than yours. They got better cars than you do. <laughs> and, and you're angry because the neighbor did this. And I'm like, you're going to have to fix that error inside of you if you want to heal. You need to release and stop judging. And, and so she was incredibly thankful for the information, right? Mm. But I can't heal her until she gets rid of that low vibrational piece inside of her and allow the healing to happen. Huh. Now, do you run into that often? No. 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 I mean, I, I, will, I will, messages will come through for people, right? But most of the time, the healings take place at whatever level. Uh -huh. right? Now, they could come back later. Right. If, if, if the person is still repeating that same bad habit, that low vibrational behavior, they'll come back. An example is, you know, you have a, an ex relationship that was really tumultuous. Right. And the let's just say the, the, the ex boyfriend. Right. It's just got this or uh, he's just attached to energetically and, and they call them psychic attacks and things like that. Right. I can remove that. But hmm. if you call the guy up again. You're, you're just <laughs> recreating that energetic cord and, and, and now you got to do the work again. So yeah, they, there are times it comes back as a, a pattern or behavior that they uh, reinitiate. Ken, uh, I can't ha oh, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, was this what you did with me? Was, was this what you call the rapid healing method that you're, uh, you started using? Yeah, we can call it rapid healing. I actually call it, um, so the rapid healing is what I really term for the group stuff, right? Because I don't have a name for it. Okay. Right? I'm not a, I've yeah. never been a marketing guy. I've always been a, the, the technology <laughs> entrepreneur. But the team called it rapid repair or rapid. Yeah. Well, so yeah. And it is rapid. It's incredibly rapid. Yeah. Well, this would be interesting if this works for me because this injury, I know right when I got it, uh, I was at 20 years old and I was working in this uh, warehouse where we loaded 100 pound bags. Uh, it was at Pillsbury factory in Minneapolis, 100 pound bags of uh, flour. Mm -hmm. onto onto a uh a train uh uh and uh you know we have to pick them up over our heads and put them up there and uh w one time i just i just felt it uh my shoulder go out and it's been ever since then healing it, it heals and then it goes out so it's a chronic thing for decades <laughs> oh yeah so you know trish you actually impressed me you know when you're like i gotta go shopping like right after we did it <laughs> <laughs> Could do what she should just relax. It's easy for a day. I want to you test know. it. Yeah, I'm like she's gonna do that, but it all worked out beautifully, right? I mean, it was yeah. a little bit longer than yeah, you. Yours took a few days or a few weeks, which is kind of long. Uh -huh. yeah, but I, I think you were you were put into the test intentionally, like you were. What do they call that when people are uh, dealing with those new products or testing those products or? Put them through the paces. I think that's what you might have been doing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I wanted to. I, I so wanted to be just, you know. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, you know, yeah. so far it's been good. I mean, I, I feel like each day there's healing that that still occurs. Yeah, yeah. I don't know well, if that's normal, but what's interesting is Trish went to the ortho uh, doctor recently, and uh, her, you know, her in between ankles, sessions with Kim. right. Yeah, and her ankle is still swollen up, and uh, but she told him that the pain is is dramatically reduced, and he said, "Well, you know, if you did the surgery, your ankle would still be swollen up. You just wouldn't have the pain. So if you can get rid of it through psychic healing, he was very open to it. Do yeah. that instead of the surgery. Yeah. So he's kind of a, an advanced uh, a surgeon, Boy, I that's guess. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I he said. Have... Well, I was just going to tell you, you said that mind-body connection is powerful and real. And I thought, wow, I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I've had doctors, you know, I've worked on doctors a lot, right? And they, but they'll never give me a testimony. And they'll never, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're like, nope, we can't, we can't talk about this. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Ken, how, how has your personal life changed since you've started doing this? I imagine it's been pretty dramatic. Um. It's, it's, it's pretty quiet. And, and what I mean by that is I don't do a lot. Like, you know, I've got friends with boats. So we're down in South Florida, right? So I uh -huh. try to get on the boat as much as I can. You know, I'll, I'll go to the beach most mornings at 530 in the morning and, and walk three miles barefoot, right? To keep uh -huh. myself grounded. But any other time I'm up there. Mm -hmm. I, I literally am up there all the time. And it's it's tough, right? It's 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 it's, it's almost as if I'm, I'm floating in I don't mean I feel like I'm floating, like my thoughts and my patterns, my habits, my everything is always up there. So it's little difficult for me to relate in 3D. So if you 
want to have a conversation uh-huh. about anything happening in the world, I, I couldn't even begin to do it right. I can't have conversations uh-huh. with polarity like, hey, that neighbor's a jerk. I can't do it. Like there's there's nothing there. There's no judgment on anyone. Like it, mm-hmm. I don't care if you're cutting mm-hmm. me off in traffic. There's just nothing there. So it, it is very, very different. It's very peaceful. Huh. Right. And yeah, and I bet my, my body feels weird. Like sleeping's not the greatest. I have no fun dreams. Like all my dreams are boring. Like <laughs> if I tell people if I play with the dog before I go to bed, my dreams, the dog's in it. Right. I'm not allowed to see what I'm doing while I'm sleeping in the etheric. Um, huh. They're like, listen, if you could see what you're doing, they would follow you back and you'd have a lot of trouble. I'm like, okay, I'll take that as dream about the dog. But my body tingles. It's a numbness that goes across my hands, my face, my arms, my chest, my legs, my feet, everything. Huh. When I'm just laying there, there's a numbness that comes across, but it's not bad. It is the most beautiful thing you could ever feel. It is so soft and, mm-hmm. and, and so delicate and it's intense. I, I will lay there for three or four hours, not moving, feeling this energy. And what's happening oh. is, is they tell me I'm turning into that crystalline body. All right. So this has been going oh. on a year and a half, but as of April 1st, they ramped it up and it's tough, it, it, but it's beautiful at the same time. It's, it's hard to explain. Uh-huh. So yeah, now, if your out. dog got, if your dog got sick, could you heal your dog? I do. And I, I do, but I don't, I don't, I don't advertise that. And it's not something that uh-huh. I'm really, you know, really here to do, but yeah, I, right. I, I, I've done it. Right. And, you know, it's easier for me to view the anatomy of a human than the anatomy of a dog. But now uh-huh. with this new version that came in that we've been talking about, I don't need to see the anatomy at all. So we'll see how that transpires in animals as we go forward. Interesting. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, John, you have any questions for uh, Ken? John. Hey, John. I'm here. Nope. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> nope. Uh, I think y'all have had a very uh, in-depth and interesting conversation. So yeah, okay. I think we're good. Yep. Yeah. All right. All so, right. Thank you. Thank you very much, wait, Ken. Ken. Does Ken have, Ken, you got anything more you want to say? Anything more no. you want to tell us? You know, stay tuned. There's so much more <laughs> okay. coming. And I know it's coming. I know it's coming and it's coming in weeks and it's coming in months. It's coming before the end of the year. And, and I'll let you guys know when that happens, and then you can you can do a new okay. interview for me, and, and your your eyes will pop wide. Great! Like oh my god! <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so now tell people. Well, and and yeah, Trish, I was tell- about to say that uh, he had down in the bottom uh, left hand corner of your uh, of your uh, 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 video, you have at Ken Lloyd Ken L is it or Ken Lloyd official? It's but, Ken Lloyd but- official. Ken Lloyd yeah. official, but uh, website or anything else you want to promote? Yeah, so yeah just Ken Lloyd official. Com, and then my email's up there. But, you know, I do have an Instagram. Again, that's Ken Lloyd dot official. And some fa- Facebook again, Ken Lloyd official. But listen, guys, I'm not a social media poster. And I will never advertise. They're like, you will not advertise. Everything mm-hmm. you do will be by word of mouth. And it'll spread by word of mouth uh-huh. in, into this massive, you know, um, outreach, if you will. So even mm-hmm. though I have the Instagram, I, I, you know, I, I'm an entrepreneur of technology, but when that happened to me five years ago, they turned it all off. Like even mm-hmm. email for me uh-huh. is, is boring and a struggle and social media. I don't have two, two left thumbs. So, <laughs> you know, just, just stay tuned, you know, just, just keep watching because you're going to start seeing these podcasts like this pop up and other interviews that are coming. And then again, later this year, some really, really, really cool things kick in. And, and then that's well, please let us know when this yeah, happens right. well <laughs> if, if i don't let you know your friend susan will for sure because she'll be <laughs> okay she'll be jaw right. dropping as well yeah okay thank you well, very this much has been ken. great ken and so this much. is going up tonight right john uh yeah i believe so we're gonna make yeah we're gonna so try I'll to make it happen. link yeah okay i'll right. send you the link ken well, and thank you again yeah this absolutely. has been just great yeah and thank you for my ankle yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'll follow up with me in a day or two and I'll get in there. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> working right. there on my shoulder. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye now. Take care. Bye. <laughs>